Scott's got a book available for pre-order called The Customer's Always Wrong. And then when you pre-order it, it'll arrive when the book drops. So they say. That used to be the deal. I assume it's still in place. That'll be September 10th. All right, Dawson's here, and he's brought his news. Yeah, we're going to lead off with some more Baywatch stuff because we haven't gotten enough of it yet. <laughs> um, it appears that also in the documentary that uh, the Baywatch cast didn't get paid the big bucks despite the show's worldwide success. It's kind of embarrassing, I think. The, the cast members say that they are offered uh, $3,500 a show, said Nicole Eggert, whereas the cast of, cast of Friends was earning a million dollars each. Yeah, there's always that. You know, as a guy who used to build houses for a living and build, which was my job, you know, the notion of I, you know, you bought that land for 200 grand, then we built the house for 300 grand, and then 11 years later, you sold it for $2.7 million. Like, where's my cut? It's like, I don't know. I got paid 15 bucks an hour to frame the fucking house. That's how it worked. Or like every guy who's built a casino. Like there was there were iron workers who were on a crew that built Caesars. And that was 26 years ago. I mean, it was longer ago, but let's say the new wing or whatever. And all they do is make a billion dollars a year, but the no residual check goes to the iron worker right. who built the fucking place. I, I, it, it doesn't make sense to me that only in TV where you go, I shot that Pepsi commercial, now I need to get paid. In perpetuity. It's like you didn't do anything and you got paid for the fucking day you did do something and tough shit. Right. Uh, and, and listen, if you can drive a better deal, drive a better deal. But that's it. I have no sympathy for actors. Plus, Nicole Eggert, you got 3500 bucks a week or an episode or a day or like whatever it is, as opposed to working at the Cinnabon at LAX. Like what, right. what, what were your – you were just going to do some um, – you can invent the cure for cancer or something and sell it to up John. Like what, what exactly what, what's the alternative of what you would have got paid for? Right. I like your, with point. your high school diploma and all, I think you should go with that though. Like normal workers should get residuals for what they do because people like you can't, people are underpaid. I feel like with their labor, you know well, what I mean? If you it's work a, on a building, you get paid a certain amount of money based on traffic that goes into that building, foot traffic. Day yes, day. exactly. Bridges, you know, whatever you built a bridge 50 yeah. years ago. There's, yeah. That's a, it's a slippery slope <laughs> because the problem is, is really it. everybody, you know, the guy who built this table could lay claim to going, I need to wet my beak. I where's right. my vig. You know, right. he didn't, would never do that. But the point is, is is someone could go, yeah, well, I hung the door in the front of the Winchell's Donuts, and it's some, the door that everyone <laughs> walks through to buy donuts. I'm not saying I should get 50 cents a donut, but two cents a donut. You know, it, it would never, it would be endless. And my feeling is, is um, call out your price, get paid, mm -hmm. and then go home. And if you don't get paid when you're doing it, that's on you. Now, Nicole yeah. Eggert could have went, I want 10 grand an episode, and I'm quitting. And they would have went, there's the door. Right. That's what they would have said. Right. Uh, yeah. Jeremy Jackson took a little more. Ooh. You know, a little sniff every oh. now and then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was his big. He got his, he got he got his, his pound, pound of flesh. flesh. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, Jeremy's like, look, they're not going to pay me. At least I'm going <laughs> to... Steal some of these donuts. By the way, Jeremy Jackson also says that he was on speed quite a bit. And speed back then, I believe, was biker crank. Not the kind of stuff that's up today. Jesus. That might cause the deviated septum that you're hearing in his oh. laughter. That's a possibility there. But he mm. did mention that it he was It wasn't a beat. sailing accident? Right. <laughs> and this Hobie cat. You're right. I did hear that he was strung out pretty good for a while. Yeah, he said uh, at one point he hadn't been... Uh, he hadn't slept in five days. And that's... Gnarly, mm. um, and uh, and he and I Hasselhoff would come up to him and say, "Are you smoking pot or something?" <laughs> He's like, "Oh shit!" Do you? What would you rather? Not sleep for two days, or not shit for seven days? Ooh, my God, that's easy. Easy, easy. I'd not sleep for two days. Man, it's so fucking painful, though. It's so painful. When yeah. At this sleep. festival last weekend, I woke up on 
I didn't go. I went 36 hours. I didn't go 24 hours. Yeah. But I woke up at, uh, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, worked all day, and then I had to get a shuttle to the airport at 4.45 in the morning. Festival ends at midnight. Everyone's partying. You're just going to stay up. And then I don't sleep on airplanes. And then I got home and stayed awake as long as I could and finally went to sleep. But I went about 36. Two days, not a problem. You get a little punchy. But uh, to carry well, thank around... Thank you for shitting on my point. But <laughs> two days is a problem for most people, is, right. what, is what I would say. Yeah. And I'll bet you closed your well, eyes on the airplane. I'm, I'm also saying... I'm not saying you saw the I'm logs. saying I'm strictly going <laughs> with your hypothetical compared to not shitting for seven days... That can be incredibly painful. I've, you know, went for maybe four or five days <clears throat> and it hurt. I yeah. feel like I've talked to a lot of people who haven't shit for prolonged periods of time. Not good for you, but they just didn't. Like, I, yeah. there's some people that have a sh shit schedule like snakes eat. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. I've I just eat a whole rabbit people. every 12 days. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, all right. So, let's say three days up versus seven days shitting. And and where are you at, Scott? I would, I mean, I love to sleep. I sleep, like, if I could, I would sleep 15 hours a day like a dog, in yeah. all honesty. Yeah, I, I need sleep. So, I would take the not shitting. All I'm right, well, I've split the room then. Yeah. I, I, I find serious sleep deprivation is painful and it affects the shit like you might as well just give me a quaalude and a 40 ouncer <laughs> i'm that good at things once i get past into whatever right. sleep deprivation one day done it listen i used to work morning radio yeah and i've done my fair share but also i would say dawson there is a big i've done many a when i was shooting an independent film we knocked off one night at like 2.30. Sure. I got home at 3. I used to do Howard Stern all the time on on very little sleep. Yeah. But there's still a difference between like a 90-minute nap mm -hmm. and going through. Like yeah. eyes don't close for two days. I, I can get a little charge on a 90-minute nap or two hours. You know, when I used to do Stern, I'd come home at 12.30 night, go to bed at 1.30 and get up at two thirty. Jesus, and go back in and do stern. But that's true. The one hour could get me through yeah. till nine thirty in the morning or oh whatever. If I God. couldn't do the one hour, I, I think I would be I would be wrecked. But we'll get a poll. All right. Anyway, what else? What what were we talking about? Uh, well, the creator of my so called life, Winnie Holtzman, was uh, thirty nine when she was writing this um, television show. Did you guys ever see it? Um, mm -mm. My so called life. Did you say? Yeah. No, what was it on? It was I mean, I've heard of it. groundbreaking drama series about the life of a perfectly normal che teenager played by Claire Danes. Uh -huh. As she worked her way, her way through the perfectly normal misery of trying to be a human being in American high school in the uh -huh. 1990s. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that the, uh, the creator of My So-Called Life was um, definitely a fan of Loveline, not necessarily a fan of yours, though. Wow. Yeah. In an interview. <laughs> she she liked asked, the she radio said, show, but not me? No, it, she didn't even mention the radio show. They, they're calling to the TV show. They're calling to the MTV oh. television show. She <laughs> says, do you remember Loveline? Holzman asked. This is the creator of my so-called line. Yeah. Thank God I didn't start by saying, oh, God, I love that show. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> we were both like, huh? Yeah, All right, but go so ahead. What was that? She said, there was this show with that guy. Dr. Drew Pinsky was his name. And there were a lot of young people on it. I guess some of them might have been in their 20s, but they were teens calling in. There were teens calling in, asking questions about sex and love. I listened to that sometimes. I'm not saying I stole from that, but it would get me in the mood and it would assure me that, in other words, life isn't just special for teens. They do go on to credit you later oh, in the article. I love that show. Uh, Holzman, whose reason credits include <laughs> working on the script for upcoming Wicked movies, notes that she pulled dialogue from everywhere in life, not just confused teenagers tuning, turning to Adam Carolla for sex help. This is a big story. I, big I, story. I expect a lot of calls from family members. <laughs> uh -huh. My dad's going to get on the blower later today. Son, did a deep dive. It is curious, though, that... She says there was the with that the show with that guy, Doctor Drew Pinsky. It wasn't a show with a guy. 
It was a show with two guys. Yeah. It was always a show with two guys. What right. happened to Chop Liver over here? Yeah. Yeah, nice you're right. So I'd like some more so-called credit next time. I agree. <laughs> How about that? How about my so-called nice. credit, bitch? Well, I got some good news. Mm. Uh, we might not hear from Lizzo for a couple years. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. She's on a mission to restore her mental well-being. The oh, Grammy please award winner. do it in solitude, yeah. quietly. Yeah. Please. Yeah. She's so gonna, She's going to take a step back. Mm. I hope she comes out with an album of just uh, Don't Stop Believing covers. <laughs> just put f- 15 of those in a row for you. <laughs> if we could get her and Sofia Vergara to shut up for a calendar year, it would be so important to me. If I could just not hear something that those mm-hmm. two were thinking. Well, Lizzo announced she's taking a gap year. Oh, good. She shared the info on Instagram. She did not add much further a clarification. But uh, she released a video. Um, I don't think we have it, but the video description is just great. Um, it's flowery in the video. Oh, well, maybe we'll find the video. She can be seen walking barefoot out to the wooden balcony of her room at what appears to be a resort in Bali. Mm. She looked all relaxed. She stood on the balcony with her hands on the railing. At some point, she raised her hands up while droplets of rain fell gently onto her body. Well, if there's a Lizzo video, uh, let's look for it. <laughs> see if it's uh, see if it's there. Um, I'm I'm worried about this, mm. and the reason I'm worried about it is when people yeah, there you go, there she is. actually make a commitment oh. to silence and 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 mental health. They don't announce it. Right. They just do it. Just you do know it. what I mean? Yeah. So I'm worried that she's going to keep talking throughout this journey. Yes. And that, so I'm, I'm not going to start chilling the champagne just yet. Okay, that's Lizzo. Yeah. Right. That's uh, fierce. I think that's pretty fierce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She loves herself. Uh, some fans uh, are supporting her. <clears throat> um, one fan wrote, soon everybody going to be talking about how great she looks because she's slowly losing some weight mm-hmm. after they've been dogging her weight this whole time. Well, one, can one I say? Uh, like let it. me let me say this. I would like to defend humanity by saying, I don't think we have a big issue with weight. Um, in that, we don't stop people randomly at supermarkets who <laughs> are fat and go like, "Really hey. think you should be hey. eating the peanut butter?" <laughs> it's the wrong with your carriage. For you. Yeah, stay Get away from the, the pound cake, bitch. Five. Got the word "pound" right in it, and you've you picked up too many of them. <laughs> you get five minutes in the bakery. Move right, along. right, right. We 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 really don't do that. Yes, we're pretty live and let eat. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. the problem is is when the chicks put on the sports bra and the cycling shorts and try to explain to you why this is the new face of beauty, then you get some pushback. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And the problem is is they bring it on themselves because they go, look, there's a fat chick in every fucking corner of this universe now. Like, there's just fat people everywhere. Go to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. There's tons of fat chicks getting around on those Lark scooters. Tons of. I don't stop and ask them their weight. Hey. I don't ask them to put the churro down. What's the tire pressure on? That I, I don't ask them about the tire pressure that should be increased with the extra weight. But that's how my. By the way, my my grandfather was killed by a fat chick on a scooter, had a blowout, and just swerved right into his lane, <laughs> took him out. But. I don't say anything, but when you start explaining that this is the new ideal and that we're healthy and that you should be attracted to this, when Dove Soap tries to sell us on this, (laughs) then we push back and then we get into fat shaming. But we're not really into fat shaming. You just try to foist something on us that we didn't want. And that's how, who we are. But is it is it held up as like an ideal, or is it just like the like people like this exist? And Dove Soap is trying to go. We know people like this exist. They, if they want, there's way more of this than there are Nicole Eggerts. <laughs> then I'd go. 
True that. Right. But they don't do that. They go, we found the new shape of beauty. Oh, and then I go, that's no, you didn't. Uh-huh. And now we get into an argument, right. and that's the issue. And now you're screaming at the television. Uh, that's right. <laughs> I think we stumbled across uh, your new cooking show, though, Live and Let Eat. Live and Let Eat. A that's celebration Adam of Carolla. great food and minding your own business. Yeah. Yeah. I like garlic. <laughs> <laughs> garlic makes everything better. It's possible that Lizzo's taking her year off um, because of the sexual uh, harassment suit that was allowed to go forward against her. I thought it was like a verbal harassment thing. Uh, She uh, allegedly encouraged catching dildos launched from performers' vaginas at a strip club and eating bananas protruding from the performers' vaginas. Oh, they were on the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. There's no rules on That's the road. That's not Orange the County. The only rule on the road is don't shit on the bus. Yeah. That's the only rule on the road. Yeah, tell that to Dave Matthews. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that. That's like them in Thailand or, or at, at like the red light district or something. That, that's that's Amsterdam, they were, they were right? Amsterdam, that, yes. Yeah, that's not a states thing. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know why the fan was saying, like, everyone's dogging her for her weight. It seems like there was a bigger issue going on that people didn't like. It's bury the lead. <laughs> yeah. Just, she's fat. It's easy. There you go. Yeah, you're going to get sued. I mean, that's just where we're, we're at these days. Yeah. She looks like she lost a lot of weight, though. She looks really good, especially in that rain. It just looks glorious <laughs> on her vacation in Bali. Magne- I can't wait for updates on the gap year every mm-hmm. other week. <sighs> <laughs> and and also, if you're big and beautiful and bold, then why are you losing weight? Like I I don't I don't mm. get it. Mm. There's a she plays the flute, right? Yeah, maybe it's yeah, an airflow so. thing. Maybe it's a, a wind she's not thing. Breathing mm. as well, and her flautist skills are starting to suffer. <laughs> so there maybe, is a, maybe she's doing it for the art. Joe, I think I liked a tweet. That from a few days back that was insane about a female doctor explaining that being fat wasn't bad for you. You can look it up. It's 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 probably on the internet somewhere. So it's always a thin white chick who explains like because <laughs> they want the other bitches to get fatter, more cock for them. But they never. That's the subtext. They never say it, but I know what they mean. They want everyone to be a fucking blimp except for them. Oh, do you have that? That one. It's it's. It's pretty crazed. It is a female, obviously woke doctor. I'm also, I'm also semi convinced that a lot of people put a few fake degrees up on their wall and then put the top of scrubs on <laughs> and then yeah. give you a lecture on shit. Like I could just be like, you know, smoking's good for you, but eating pussy will kill you. Right. Anyway, and I'm Doctor Adam. The scrubs. I got are from the scrub. I got the scrub top on, <laughs> so you can. Take, take it from me. All right. What? Let's hear what she says. She's Here's a doctor. my hot take as a doctor. I totally agree. It is okay to be fat. We don't say that enough, but it needs to be normalized. If you are fat, that is okay. It is typically not a problem that requires immediate solving. It is not an emergency. You don't have to drop everything in the pursuit of being not fat. Erin said this other thing in a different video that I totally agree with as well, is that it is okay to not be healthy. We act like it is this moral failing, this cardinal sin that you deserve a scarlet letter if you are not healthy. And there's a name for that and that's called healthism. Now don't get me wrong, in my line of work, there's a lot of people that I see that okay. want to gain weight, lose weight, take other measures Nobody that wants think will improve their health in some way. And by all means, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you with that and be supportive of that. But a good doctor will not judge you for being fat. They will not judge you for being unhealthy. They will not judge the decisions that you made or the decisions that were made for you, which is the much more likely scenario. That's a good doctor. That got you to that's the what point a good doctor where you That's right a good doctor. Now. You don't have to lose weight. Yeah. The changes that you want to make. Now and do smoking. You are someone oh, who if I told this bitch I vaped, yeah. she'd fucking tackle me on the way out to the car. weight can be health promoting. We're here to help you with that. We are also here to help you if you decide to not make any changes at all. We're still there. Oh, okay. Oh, God. Hey, this I'm, is uh, trouble. I'm the coach for your uh, basketball team. And listen, I'm going to give you guys some drills to work on. But if you don't work on it, 
You know, if you don't dribble and take your free throws every day, I'm not going to get mad at you. No, Thank you. That'll be your personal be decision. Right. It's your personal <laughs> decision. And being fat is about the worst thing, least healthy way you can live. And it cost us tons of money. And everyone who got ravaged by COVID was basically fat people. So I don't know what the fuck. It's horrible on your joints. Like, I have no idea what this bitch is talking about. But anyway, that's where we're at now. There is something to Elvis like- had a better doctor. <laughs> Well, he's got all the like right Elvis drugs. had a, a less yeah. dangerous doctor <laughs> yeah. than this bitch. Yeah. There is something too where it's like if you are if you're if you're overweight and you go to the doctor, I feel like the doctor's always going to go to oh you just you, you do need to lose weight instead of like if there is something deep like deeper going on or some issue. I feel like you have trouble getting like believed sometimes. Why do they weigh you every time you get a checkup if it's neither here nor there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they don't measure my hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I you fucking first thing you do is you step on a scale when you get a checkup. So why? If I had to guess, so they can see any drastic reductions or increases in your weight since the last time you were visited. And I'm here to also to tell you, it's for them to go, eh, you could probably drop a couple sure. LBs, right, you right, know, right, for right. your height and your build right. and whatever, you should be coming in about 190 and you're yeah. 207. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's, that's what it is. That's what doctors do. They tell you shit. All the time that you don't want to do. That's that's what they do. That's what doctors and dentists well, do. Well, that's right, yeah. They go, enough enough of the candy corn now. All right. Well, you might have heard about this story a long time ago. In 2022, not a long time ago, but um, a former Nevada politician was sentenced to life in prison after being found guilty on Wednesday of killing a journalist in September of 2022. As the jury's four-person read this out the guilty fake verdict, news. Clark County Public Administrator Robert Tellis looked down and shook his head. He was sentenced to life in prison with the eligibility for parole after a minimum of 20 years. Um, basically, what happened was that uh, he stabbed oh, I would, I would, the, a Las Vegas Journal Review reporter. Go ahead. I would be a mess being sentenced. Oh yeah, because they'd go. All right, we're giving you ten years, and then you you know you'll be eligible for parole after ten years. Mm-hmm. And I would be like, but that's from right now, right? <laughs> and they'd be like, no, we got to get you processed. And I'd go, well, how long is that going to take? They'd be like, a week. I'd be like, no, no, no. You just sentenced me to ten years. Right. You just hit your fucking gavel right now. I should be. Able, I'm not. I'm prorating this shit. It's from now. It's starting what, to stop. Bailiff, what time is it? There actually is. Twelve forty-five. All right. I'm not starting the clock four days from now. All I got to right. get on this ten years now. now. I'm not sure in this guy's case because they say it's twenty years until he's eligible for parole with with a life sentence. But when you do get uh, a yearly sentence, um, they take out time served. So mm-hmm. if you were being held prior to trial, those are days that count. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of states, um, if you do two days without getting into trouble, they give you a third day free. Oh, really? So you only end up doing, in California, I believe, you only end up doing, a lot of counties in California, you'll end up doing two-thirds of your sentence if you stay out of trouble. This is one of the rare instances I'm looking at both these gentlemen where they both look like the killer. Yeah. yeah. Usually yeah, it's it was... easy to tell. The <laughs> El Salvadorian migrant and the blonde right. chick, it's pretty easy to do that. But one of them yeah. was jogging. They're both capable <laughs> right. of murder. They both, both of those people. I mean, you put a gun in my head, I'd be like, they yeah. both seem like they could do some damage. Yeah. Uh, either way, I'm not playing poker with either of no. them. No, no. Turns out the guy on the right is the guy who did the killer. Okay. Yeah. The killing. And we killed this journalist because he... Oh, this was an older guy, story, I think. Yes, this is a couple of years ago. Um, he stabbed the reporter to death because the reporter exposed corruption in his office, destroying both his political career and his marriage. The story mm. detailed an allegedly hostile work environment, uh, including bullying, retaliation, and an inappropriate relationship between uh, Tellus well, and his staff. stabbing a guy for that's okay, but it's not like he tried to help a woman off a table or something. <laughs> something yeah, that was right. really stabbable. Right. You know what I mean? All he did was expose a little corruption. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like he helped a woman. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. Offer a hand. Offer a hand. <laughs> yeah, he was arrested days after this happened. But this is almost two years. That's... Uh, 
That's I guess that's how long the justice system takes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That mm-hmm. seems pretty expedient. I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, his family took the stand and just begged, begged not to get him a give him a life sentence without parole. I guess he's got a young family, so he might see parole after twenty years mm. and and be able to see his family one more time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't either. I don't feel like people would beg for me to get out early. <laughs> I think they'd like to just kind of know where I was, you well, know. Who's paying for stuff while take you're in? Break. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, they might like, beg. Get them out. They might beg. <laughs> he's got. You're right. Somebody, he's got like 90 people. Somebody's got to pay for right shit. Now. Oh yeah. yeah, you're right. I didn't factor in that's the right. they, yeah. people may have to pay for their own shit yep. <laughs> theory. The table residual guy is going to come after uh, for you. That's right. <laughs> where is he? Yeah. All right. Is uh, let's do one more. Uh, yeah. Let me just ask. Uh, is our guest here? Because I was told they were getting here early, but then we... Oh, there's a sign that you didn't hold up. Oh, okay. Can I add one thing to the Jeremy Jackson confesses that he yes. smelled? Yes, please. Um, he started when he was 10, so not eight, but he did it for a decade. Oh, hold and, on a second. Okay. In, the, in, the, in the doc, it said he got cast at eight. Okay, um, yeah, probably. He didn't start the sniffing. He, he joined Baywatch when he was only 10. Oh, and so in the dock... And he was there from 90 to 99. He, so he was done at, you know, 19. Now, I'm, right. just, I'm just saying this. Those are prime it, sniffing it, years. Yes, those are prime <laughs> sniffing years, but the sniffing years are like 11, 11 and a half. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Jeremy Jackson did far worse things. Uh-huh. When he was 13, 14, and 15 years old. I will guarantee that. <laughs> You're saying sniffing is a sniffing. stepping stone it's a, drug? It's a slippery slope is you what it is. You start with sniffing, but yeah. you end up getting into like yep. necrophilia or <laughs> <Yeah>. something. <laughs> like it all starts with a sniff. Started listening to NXS. I need a new doc All from of a sudden, he had a collection That's... of ties. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying he start Now, they said in the doc... Eight, but they said auditioning, probably auditioning. Okay. Maybe he Makes was, sense. maybe he was like about to turn nine right. and auditioned and then totally. started the next year or whatever it is. But right. they said he did the sniffing at 13. Right, yeah, the, if yeah. he did the sniffing at 13, he is, yeah. he's holding back in this documentary. He's not giving you yeah. everything that dude did at 13. I did worse things to my television set <laughs> while watching Baywatch than he did on the set of Baywatch? Mm. No. Yeah. No way. That's at least true. it wasn't first day of work he was doing it. He waited three years yeah. or something. He had seniority. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had to wait <laughs> tenure. <laughs> he was grandfathered into those right. panties. Uh, by the way, uh, this is, uh, Jeremy, he's going to sniff your uh, bikini at the end of the day. It's in a contract. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Look, most of the time I tell women to get over it, but I could see them going, ugh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, yeah, the guy turned out to be like a pretty hardcore junkie. Right. And now you got to think, maybe your musk turned him to drugs. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe your snatch was so smelly. <laughs> what else can I <laughs> sniff? tried... To soothe the pain yeah. with drugs. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's on you. It's possible. It's highly <laughs> possible. Yep. It's not. It's likely. It's probable. It's probable. It's probable. Oh, it's probable. It's, it's probable. <laughs> yep. From uh, bikinis, from bikini bottoms to biker crank. That's right. 